Jared for calling me here. And uh, thank you, Professor, the dignitaries on the podium, the other students. I'm sorry I'm not very fluent in Hindi, so I'll be talking in Hindi. You know, uh, when Jahid was uh, uh, conceptualizing this thing, you know, this, this particular uh, talk that has been organized today, we were thinking about a name and we uh, together we decided on this name. And, uh, you know, uh, generally uh, certain things uh, and need to be, students need to be reminded of, that we generally accuse the West, especially the British, of creating a very poor opinion of our civilizational past. It is not like not everyone among the British was responsible for this poor opinion that Hindus and India's ancient civilization has been shown in a very uh, wrong way that we believe that it was the British's doing. Not everyone among the British was responsible for that. A certain section of the British intelligentsia and the political and bureaucratic leadership that was in India, led by Lord William Bentley and Thomas Babington McCollum, they were responsible for creating this opinion. And all of you know that who went and fought for of Lord Benting? Konja ke paratha Lord Benting ko? India se? Raja Ram Mongo. I am not an apologist for Sati. I am not saying that Sati was good. But Raja Ram Mongo was lying to the world. He was a liar. What are the lies that you speak to the world? There are two things. One, Sati was not universal. Second, Sati was not compulsory. He made it sound to the world, whosoever is listening to him, and constructed the convenient program he made it sound as if Saturn was universal and compulsory, which it was not. Every one of us know that in our holy books there are certain rules and regulations, customs and rituals for widows to follow. If the widows don't live, if all the widows become sati on the fires of their departed husbands, who will follow those rules? Don't follow Karim Yusuf. Ekadashi ka jo ye hota hai, jo vidwalo manate hain, to don't follow Karim Yusuf. Jo vidwalo jiviti nahi hoon, jindai nahi hoon. So it was not compulsory, nor was it universal. Not all sections of the Hindu population, women, not not from all sections of the Hindu population, were born in sati. But he made it sound as if it were. I would refer to a letter written by Lord Benting to the then Secretary of State for India. Lord William Benting, as you know, was a servant of the British East India Company. You must always use the term, prefix the term British with East India Company because there was the Dutch East India Company and the French East India Company. He was a servant of the British East India and he had written a letter to the then Secretary of State. Please refer to that letter. That Indians were actually barbarians. You know, Indians were barbarians. If you read the book, 
the men who ruled India by Philip Mason, you will find that Indians were barbarians, not only Hindus. Hindus, Muslims, everyone living in India were barbarians. I would refer a third work. It is known as the Sleeman Report. There was this British official, Colonel William Henry Sleeman, W. H. Sleeman. This is Hindustani mein bola jata hai, bola jata tha Saliman Saab. The report that he wrote, the dismissal of Nawab Wadi Ali Shah was based on that report. Please refer to that report. What he has written about Indians. So that is one section of the British intelligentsia which created this picture of India being a barbarian nation. A barbarian people, though they were collectively known as the Anglicis. Fine? That India, since it was uncivilized, needed to be civilized through the imposition of British culture and British common law. On the other hand, were the Orientals. And it is because of the Orientals that we have learned so much about our civilization of the past. And there is a story of another William here. He was a judge of the Supreme Court of Adjudicature at Calcutta. That point of time Supreme Court was in Calcutta. As you know, Calcutta was the capital of India. His name was Sir William Jones. And he believed that both Hindus and Muslims must be governed by their faith-based personal laws. Faith-based personal laws. Because personal laws are rooted in what? In religion. And for that purpose, Sir William Jones studied both Sanskrit and Arabic. Otherwise, he would not be able to implement those faith-based personal laws. So the Orientalists, I talk of another. You know, um, the university at Nalanda, the original one, not the new one, was raised by one Bhakti Arkhalji. He said to his commanders, the Goa asked if their library has the Muslim holy book. It was not possible to have the Muslim holy book in an Indian library, in an ancient Indian library. He said his direction was that if you don't find the book, burn the library. And it is because of that, the entire Buddhist history was almost wiped out. No one ever heard of Emperor Ashoka. But then how did we know him? We had another Orientalist that brings us. But he was not posted in India. He was posted in Lanka, Sinon, as the British used to say. His name was George Turner. T U R N O U R, George Turner. <coughs> he belonged to the Ceylonese civil service. And in Bengal was formed what is known as the Asiatic Society of Bengal, as different from the Royal Asiatic Society that is in London. There was a man working for the Asiatic Society. He was one of the founding members. He actually worked in the government mint. His name was James Prince. On the name, on his name, we have a ghat in Calcutta, known as the Prince of Ghat. It's still there. What did he do? <coughs> he was the first person to decipher the scriptures on the Ashokan rock and pillar epics. And what did he find? He found that each and every epic began with the words Pyadha Silaja Hevam Ah. Pear the sea, Raja, Heva Aha, King Pear the sea spoke thus. They understood that this man was not a simple king. Because the edicts were found in East India, in South India, in West India, even in North India, of Afghanistan. So this man must have been an emperor. An emperor. 
It's not a simple matter. But they did not know who Priyadasi was. Priyadasi, Pali, for the Sanskrit Priyadashi. But then, George Turner, as I was telling you, had already read a book written in Sri Lanka, in Lanka, rather. There was no Sri Lanka at that point in time. Written in Pali. Written in Pali, but written in Sri Lanka, all over the world. The name of the book is Mahavamsa. In the Mahavamsa was written that a prince came from India whom they called Mahinda or Mahindra. Mahinda in Pali, Mahindra in Sanskrit. And spread Buddhism in Lanka. The Theravada Buddhism that is there in Sri Lanka. That was spread there. His father, he was the son of a monarch, an emperor. What was that emperor? Who was he? He, his actual name was Ashok, and people called him Priyadasi. Deva Nama Priyadasi. Then they came to know that who this man was. Because when the research started about Priyadasi, after James Prince had deciphered him, and James Prince and the Asiatic Society scholars started asking the Brahmins, the Pandijis, that who was Priyadasi? They could not say anything because there was no Buddhist history. But the Akhanji had done a bit of that. Fine. So, India is, has a tradition. People say that Indians don't have a tradition of writing history. That is wrong. That is very wrong. Our sacred literature is also part of our history. Fine. You know, I will uh, just digress a bit and then you will understand why I digress. That suddenly in our campus started the culture of what is known as Mahishasura Puja after Durga. And suddenly, sir was speaking about uh, finding icons for the Dalits. You know, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Ambedkar became an icon. When we were children, we heard him, about him as someone who had written the Constitution. Nothing else. This search for icons, suddenly it was said that this Mahishasura was actually a Dalit. And an upper caste woman, Durga as she was, killed a Dalit. And no one could convincingly oppose this. Why? Why couldn't you oppose this? Don't you know that Asuras and Dalits are different people? Asuras were a clan of Thalians, just as the Devas were. They were as Aryan as the Devas. Fine. Now, he may have been killed, but the reason was <coughs> reason was never passed. That was never a consideration. The issue was something else. I think you know. What does the Devi Puran say? What does the Skanda Puran say? What does the Vishnu Puran say about us was? So the philosophical and ideological standards of today cannot be applied to situations and characters of the past. This is wrong. This is foolish. This is imprudent. You cannot do that. So Asuras were different people. Fine. And the fact that he was killed does not, the reason was never passed. People who say that he was killed for past reasons are absolutely, you know what, good for nothing. And those who could not oppose them were equally good for nothing. You should have opposed them, you should have known that. We have heard that there are several versions of the Ramayana. What is the original version? Written by Valmiki. You know, there's a great controversy about vegetarianism in India and non-veg, eating of the non-vegetarian food and everything. 
You know, one of the days when we eat veg, whosoever is aware, non veg eater among Hindus, one of the days is the Ram Nahami, the day the Lord was incarnated in Ayodhya as the son of King Dasharat. But then, as the Valmiki Ramayana says, that he himself was a non veg eater. You know, the day his wife was kidnapped, you know, in the forest. You've heard about, you know the story, everyone. There was this golden deer and she wanted that deer and he was actually a Rakshasa. And Ram killed him. And while he was coming back, he killed some more deer and more and he brought it. Because sirf hiranka, mm, uh, सोने का हिरण का रूप देखने से तो नहीं चला तो लंच तो बनाना पड़ेगा ना घर में खाना तो बनाना पड़ेगा अब सीता जी सिर्फ सोने का हिरण देखते रहेंगे और लंच नहीं बनाएंगे ये तो नहीं हो सकता तो वापस वापस आने के टाइम में वो कुछ मार के लेके आ रहे थे और आके देखे की पत्नी का अपहरण हो गया है तो जैसे हिंदी सिनेमा में होता है हाथ से सारा जो भी हो रहा है हाथ से गिर गया एंड ही वॉज एंड गिविंग डियर मीट फॉर यर गिवर्स that was something that was compulsory to him. And Hiran Marke kon la ta tha? So he chota bhaiya ke saath me gaya tha. So to bhaiya bhaiya ka seva karne ke liye to gaya tha. Usi ko bolta tha ye Marke lao, Marke lao. So that is there in the original part. Don't get carried away by the Tulsi Ramayana. Tulsi Ramayana is an eulogy. The Valmiki Ramayana is not an eulogy. It's the life and times of Lord Ram. So, you know, there are many stories, many things, but all this, the various way of telling one particular story, there's a Bengali Ramayana also. There are certain characters in the Ramayana, in the Bengali Ramayana, which are not there in the original Ramayana. For example, Ravan had a son, Mahila Ramayana. वो बेंगोली रामायण है मैं ओरिजिनल रामायण ढूंढ रहा था मिला है तब बेंगोली रामायण देखा उसमें है बाकी और दूसरे रामायण में नहीं है इट इज द सेम स्टोरी टोल्ड इन डिफरेंट वेज सो यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर एवरीथिंग व्हेन यू टॉक ऑफ अ टाइमलेस इंडिया टाइमलेसनेस विल बी फुलफिल्ड ओनली इफ यू नो दैट we can study several things about our nation but then saying that our nation is not a nation if it is not a nation then no Adi Shankaracharya would have gone to the north no Guru Tegh Bahadur would have gone to Assam no Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have gone to Mathura if it was not a nation as a nation state it may be different it may be new. As a nation state, it is a new thing. It was born on the 15th of August 1947. When, as Dr. Ambedkar said, when the British fled from India. The British did not go from India. He was very right in saying the British fled from India. And uh, you know there will come a time, I hope, that these forces which are trying to create disunity in India making caste an excuse, making tribal culture an excuse, making religion an excuse, will also one day flee from India. God bless you. Thank you very much.